And we'll start with the buy low candidates. This is straight from a list that EMAC has provided. Uh, some of the buy low candidates, and again, you could see it here if you're following along on the video portion. Uh, Ryan Braun, Matt Kemp, Jacoby Ellsbury, Mark Reynolds, Carlos Pena, who now has four home runs in three games after hitting another one Wednesday, and Giovanni Soto, who EMAC hates right now. You got to remember three that home Giovanni run. is uh, with one N. I keep spelling it with two. I <laughs> hate it when that happens. Giovanni Soto has three home runs in his last 16 at-bats after <laughs> hitting two on Wednesday. So tell me why these guys are buy low candidates now. Well, all these guys had a high draft position relative to their numbers right now. They It's time to get in on these guys before they do their uh, their regression back up to their uh, their mean. Which of these guys, if you could give, well, me, give me a scenario. Well, like you, you've I, talked I, about – I know you, you mentioned this uh, particular – Strasburg guy. for Ryan Braun. No, no. In, <laughs> in, in the bigs, you said you were going to potentially make an offer of Roy Halladay for Ryan Braun. Yeah, and I think I would do that deal straight up. Why? Uh, well, in even head to head, even in head to head, we're pitching matters. Where I much. love the pitching and Halliday and is Halliday awesome. Is gonna do you, okay? I'll let you finish. I'll yeah. let you. No, it's all right. You can interrupt me. I interrupt everybody, bro. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> what I was gonna say about Halliday, um, I, I guess part of that is the expectation Holiday can't get any better than he is now. And he's and also on such a a high innings pace right now um there's going to be some cooling off they'll have to cool him off because if they want to go through late october the way they are he can't pitch 280 innings in the regular season that's true so ryan braun also um he's got these awful splits home and away that's not going to last hitters generally have their best numbers at home and when he heats up at home in milwaukee this summer his numbers are going to be outstanding and he's already still a top 10 Fantasy outfielder, he really isn't struggling at all. Yeah. Um, it's just his numbers at home are like 220 average, just a cu few home runs. Uh, and I, I, th I think Ryan Braun is going to be a, a monster here on out. Getting, getting back to Halliday, if you had to pick the pitcher. To have the rest of the season? Yeah, from today to the end of the season, which starting probably, pitcher is going to score the most points? Yeah, I would probably still stick with Halliday. So you still think? I still that's, think he's that's very, not very necessarily good. a buy low situation. Then you're well, I am buying low because Braun isn't performing at his expectation. But he's you're, underperforming. You're full value for him by giving up a fellow first rounder. <laughs> yeah, but he's still. I'm, I'm gaining like five or six pick slots, and five or six pick slots in round one is a lot different than five or six pick slots in any other, any other draft, any other round. Halliday was probably a tenth overall guy. And Braun was the top five. And in that league where you're making the trade, you're also giving giving away a position of strength for you because your pitching staff in that league is so strong. Yeah. With the guys you have, with Carpenter, Pelfrey, Oswalt. Yeah. And, and I have a lot of decisions to make on a given week with my pitching staff, and sometimes I just like less decisions. And just having Braun there, just leave him in and let him go. You said before we move on to the sell high candidates that you think Matt Kemp by the end of the season is going to finish better than Andre Ethier, and Andre Ethier has been unbelievable so far in the first half, barring the pinky injury. Yeah, I want to I want to see actually how he did in the last week. I I should have looked he's, that up. He's been okay. Away. His batting average has been okay. I don't think he has any homers yet. Um, and you know he's he was leading the NL in the Triple Crown categories before he went down. He's right. not a Triple Crown player. Yeah, but he had his, he 330 had home runs. I think is definitely. I think he had his 50 percent of the damage. He, he had his run, and, uh, you know, he'll be good the rest of the way. He's just not going to be great, and I think Kemp has not shown his best, and I think his best is yet to come. Well, Kemp was someone you guys thought was going to be the number two outfielder. Ethier has been pretty good. He's baseball, had multi-hit right? games in each of the past At least years. in rotisserie leagues. Mm -hmm. I was a little less high on him in head-to-head -head because of the high strikeout rate and, and stolen bases aren't quite as valuable in those leagues. But in, in Roto, he was going in the first round consistently. So do you agree with that? Do you think that Kemp right now is a buy low candidate? Um, again, I, I've I've always been less high on Kemp than Emac, and I think the fantasy playing community at large have been because of that high strikeout rate. Because I don't think he's really a guy who can hit 290 to 300 year after year after year. Is Arod any good? He strikes out a lot. He does strike out a lot. Um, he's not as good anymore. But back when he was really good, he still struck out a lot. And maybe, <laughs> and maybe when Kemp starts putting up the numbers of A Rod, I'll sing a different. Oh, tune. so wouldn't that be a little late though? Wouldn't you be late to the party? I would be, yeah. but I'm I'm making the best assessment I can on what I know now. <laughs> 
and that's all you can ask anybody to do. Emag, you say buy low on Carlos Pena. Is it too late? No, not quite too late because he's still under the Mendoza line. Um, but if you know someone who has him on his team is someone who watches box scores every day, you're you're probably not going to get him at the right price. Um, you could still get him uh, affordably, though, I believe, because he's not a top ten fantasy first baseman. Do you regret the trade that you made? And and just reiterate that trade that. Uh, well, I we traded Mark about Reynolds and Brandon Wood for him in Tout Wars, and I regret it only because. I just missed the best of Carlos Pena with this little stretch he's got going. Uh, over the long haul, though, I think Mark Reynolds' production is going to outperform uh, Pena's. The question is, what does Brandon Wood do? He's had a couple multi-hit games in his rehab assignment. Uh, I'm still uh, I'm going to side more with Scott White with his uh, strikeout-to-walk ratio now. It's just uh, too inconsistent to trust. And Ellsbury, you say go get him because of the injury situation. Yeah, and it, the the thing that Ellsbury does for your fantasy team is he runs and steals bases, and the ribs aren't going to be affected by that once they get healthy. The thing that he did wrong was he tried to rush back because they needed him so badly in the outfield, and it's it set him back another month. But that month is going to come up in two weeks. And now there was a bit of news today that, you know, he needs another couple of weeks. Use that negative news to create a positive for your fantasy team. Make a deal for Ellsbury right now. All right, let's move on to some sell high candidates. And, again, if you're following along on video, you could follow this list there. Uh, the guys on this list are Jose Batista, Steven Strasburg, <laughs> Shane Victorino, Troy Gloss, Scott Rowland, and Mike Leake. And Mike Leake started Thursday's game against San Francisco, struggled a little bit. He went four and a third innings, allowed 11 hits, four walks, five earned runs with two strikeouts. And as we've talked about on previous podcasts, he's headed toward being skipped because his innings are getting up there. Uh, we've talked a little bit about Gloss and Roland. They're on tremendous pace right now. And I would assume, Emac, they're doing their 50% of damage in 25% of the time. I think that's what uh, th that's what we're getting out of. They're going to cool off. Um, but just cause this pace they're on right now is just uh, incredible. And Yeah. Uh, I, I, I could have seen Roland coming because of his ballpark. But you couldn't have seen Gloss coming it this well. He's he's just been amazing. Gloss is an especially streaky player, so the the fifty percent of the damage and twenty five percent of the season applies. Not always easy to say. Applies. It? No, it's not. <laughs> I had to think through the I, numbers I there. I messed it up. I can't believe uh, all people to mess it up. I messed it up last podcast. So uh, so I think he more fits that category. Roland, I trust to be a little more consistent, though the power pace it would be like a career high for him. So that's got to slow down. But as far as getting hits consistently, I think he should be able to do that. Roland is making me believe, though, that if a hitter has a shoulder issue, it doesn't ruin him for his career as much as just a few years. Like, the shoulder is something that takes years to build up and strengthen. So maybe those years that he was so down in his power, it was just his shoulder rehabbing to closer to normal. So maybe what the pitchers should do, and I'm just – throwing a crazy idea out there if you have shoulder surgery don't try to come back in a year do 24 months interesting um shane victorino is a guy that uh has really been on an incredible pace 10 home runs so far his career high is 14 so i'm assuming emac he's doing his 50 percent yeah. of damage and 25 percent of time uh, and scott you're shaking your head yeah here, so no, i'm assuming you don't I think don't that he's gonna cool off though because his batting average i think is in the 260 range and that's that's not Shane Victorino. He's more of a 290 guy. I, but the power it's, pace it's might of his fly down. ball rate, if you talk to Al Malkior. <laughs> but his homer rate is just too hot. It is too hot. I, I would agree with that. But I think when you take some off of that, add some to the batting average, you're probably – you're still going to get an elite player the rest of the way. I, I still say Shane Victorino is an elite outfielder, one of the more underrated guys in fantasy. Well, you did say on, uh, I believe it was Sunday's podcast, that you would trade Shane Victorino for Steven Strasburg. No, we'll you would trade Steven Strasburg, Steven Strasburg for Shane to get Victorino. Shane Victorino. Yes. Uh, yeah. We'll get to Strasburg in a second. That would um, be a mistake. Jose Batista, you think he's going to cool off also, and this has just been <laughs> – No, no, he's he's going to hit the 50 homers he's on pace. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that's not happening? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so just looking at – He can at hit 30, just so that looking means at the 12, pure numbers. 12 here on out. Looking at the pure numbers, yeah, the 50 home runs isn't going to happen. But I, just looking at stuff I've read on Jose Batista, how they he completely reprogrammed his swing. He was always starting it late in his career – and when he got to the Blue Jays, their first base coach at the time talked to him, showed him some video, got him to 
hear it in, in terms he can understand, starting his swing earlier. And that's why, looking at last year's number, he struggled all year, didn't hit a home run till I, – I, I don't know. His home runs were really low all year. I'll then look. he suddenly exploded with 10 in September mm -hmm. when he finally got the new swing in order. So I'm, I'm – and it's continued over to this year. So I don't think the, the power explosion is so much a fluke with him. Um, but we're talking maybe 30 to 35 home runs and not 50, obviously. Yeah. So do you agree with that, Scott, in terms of uh, where his value is sell high now? Well – if you can actually sell high for him, I think there's going to be so many skeptics out there over him that you're probably going to end up better off. You just talked him up pretty good. Yeah, I did, but <laughs> I don't know that anyone's going to believe me. Uh, there's probably going to be uh, – you're probably going to be better off keeping him and taking advantage of what he offers the rest of the year because, I mean, if you can get a legit stud outfield – if you can get a Shane Victorino mm -hmm. for him, for instance, I would do that. Well, let me ask you a question then. If you see maybe a, a, a week or two struggles – a week of two of him where he struggles, do you try to go then, you know, vulture and pick him up if somebody's going to get a little somebody skeptical? If somebody drops him? No, or no, no. I mean, to trade for him. Trade for him? Well, he's all for um, his last uh, t 13. So maybe yeah, this is a, that maybe so that's you, a good if, time. So if, if you believe exactly what you said and then mm -hmm. there are other people out there starting to feel the same way, do you then – He would call. He would consider him a, a, a buy, a buy low, low candidate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think – Because you think that he'll get it back I on track. Think like if somebody let's let's take another one of these angles if somebody Scott Rowland or, or Troy Gloss who's really started to pick up steam at fantasy somebody's like oh I need Troy Gloss as my third baseman Jose Bautista isn't cutting it um, anymore I would I would try to make that trade maybe even throw in a guy with Gloss um, you know one of your maybe your fourth or fifth starting pitcher maybe your fifth or sixth and try and get uh try and get Bautista that way absolutely. Gotcha. All right, Scott, we're going to turn the spotlight on you for a second here. Because All right. You are yeah. saying to many people, you wrote it in Dear Mr. Fantasy, you said it yeah. in the podcast. Yeah, I actually podcast. read this, and uh, I think this is just – okay, go ahead. Well, Scott said that he did not want Steven Strasburg because the price was too high. You said you don't care if he has 14 strikeout performance after 14 strikeout performance. Yeah. And I believe the line you said was a meh here, a meh there. Right? Everywhere a meh meh. Everywhere a yeah, meh Yeah, something like that. So, but <laughs> you say the price was too high. At the time. His average draft position was 174, which by my math in the 12-team league puts him at round 15. So That's round, pretty late. Round 15 for a you talent like this. You know how many like round this. 15 p players are still active even on rosters? Let's Some go of the other pitchers that I saw around let's there. Let's go to Andy round Pettit 15. Was, on, in our was, was in that range. Aaron Harang was in that range. Yeah. Well, you have to look at it from the perspective of of what I what I was doing in round 15. Because that's usually when you start taking pictures, though, right? A little, well, a little I mean, like, yeah, I start excited. I start well before then, yes. but there's still plenty of sleepers out there that I like. And he doesn't. Red Anderson was around in round 15 in some of those now, drafts. Scott, I have to warn you, guys. Uh, like, this guy does have Steven Strasburg, and he's been asking me every day since opening day. Is he coming up next time? Is he coming up next time? <laughs> so this is the biggest Steven Strasburg fan that's known. I don't think man. I'm the biggest, but I think I'm among a, a, a strong contingent. And, all right, first of all, it goes without saying. He struck out 14 batters, was awesome. Looks like he's going to be an ace the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. If you have him now, you should be thrilled. I'm just saying, knowing. If you don't have him, you should I'm, write leads to columns about, ha, huh, I don't care about him. <laughs> well, it's not that I don't care about him. I, I'm just, yeah, I'm just really saying. Like, meh. Even even the next time a star, somebody comes up with that much hype, I would still avoid him then. I wouldn't say, oh, I learned my lesson from Steven Strasburg. I'm not going to make that But don't that you have to do it on again. a case-by-case -case basis, though? Um, yes, but at, at the same time, I mean, it's hard to – know what anybody how anybody's going to perform when he reaches the big league well, of it's, it's a complete guessing game i mean even even somebody with, it's a, not with a great a makeup guessing game great it's a stuff it's, it's a very a inexact science I mean, your whole job is an inexact science then you're yeah, projecting true. things but but you, i but i trust people talent. who have performed at the major league level over somebody who hadn't coming into the season strasburg hadn't pitched a minor league game even i mean sure. uh, what do you so, you, so but, would I but, pass? But, but, so it, it would be a matter of passing up on guys like Brett Anderson. Mm -hmm. um, oh, good thing you did. Homer Bailey. Good thing you Brian did. Brian Mattis. Good thing I, you I did. I understand they didn't live up to it, but I'm still saying 
going into the future, I, I don't think that's the wrong approach to take because those guys looked like they were emerging, had had turned the corner and become uh, guys who were going to be mainstays of your fantasy staff when Strasburg, again, had never pitched a professional okay, but inning before. But He's at a what point, though, case than th- all those guys. At what though. point, as an owner and as an analyst, do you say, I have to sort of start to trust these guys? Because I know a year ago, or if maybe a lot longer, you were the same sort of bullish way on Tommy Hansen, where you weren't in love with Tommy Hansen. Now, you didn't, you, now you, Emac used to you know, bust your chops a little bit and say mm-hmm. you hated him. I know you didn't hate him, mm-hmm. but you were the same sort of, you know, I, I don't want to trust this guy because yeah, I haven't seen him have yet. You have to respect At, wha- to at what point, though, in the round 12, round 13, round 14, round 15 range, when you're looking at those potential sleepers, or that he doesn't pick a round 20 in the that, fantasy that, podcast league. That a guy like that doesn't creep into your mind. Um, and you say, I got to pull the trigger on this as my fifth starter, my sixth starter, my fourth starter, maybe third starter. I would rank other sleepers ahead of the complete unknowns like that. Mm-hmm. And particularly in, I think Emac talked about Strasburg going in round 20 in the podcast league. My team is, I have a good team in the podcast sure. league. It was good without Steven Strasburg. Mm-hmm. Devoting a bench slot, one of only five bench slots to a guy but who isn't going to contribute it's not for about two the months. First Ten, not ten weeks of the season. It's actually about all twenty-six weeks. But, it, but if you're weeks. buried in those last, uh, however many weeks of the season, uh, because anybody that stashed Strasburg isn't necessarily buried. Oh, no, they're not, not necessarily with the twentieth round pick. <laughs> they're not necessarily buried, but they had a, they they could have gone. They could have had a lot of help along the way from that extra bench slot. And if Strasburg Not didn't end 20. up, if Strasburg was more like David Price or Matt Wieters or Alex Gordon or any of the other huge prospects who didn't pan out, I mean, it's easy to look at the ones who didn't oh, and say, absolutely. oh, you're wrong. They, they're, they're, there's definitely some, a lot but, of validity there. But, but it's, it's like a coin flip. But, but I just don't understand. Be I don't understand right the, the. There was only 12 the, players picked after Steven Strasburg the idea in the of, podcast league. After, None of if, which. If you keep saying he's going to, you know, 14 strikeouts, 14 strikeouts, and you still don't have any. Credence to, I want this guy, or I, I think he's going to keep it up. That's no, where I just don't I, I understand think, the logic. I think Strasburg is awesome now. Obviously, it's too late to do anything mm-hmm. about it. I'm saying if I had a chance to redo it on a complete unknown like Strasburg again, I would still do the same thing. Okay, that's but all. fair he enough. He was more known than any unknown. He, he was the most hyped prospect in the history of baseball. 